All right, so next we move to the main topic of this section, and in fact this chapter, which is metrics on probability measures. And we begin by defining two metrics on the set of probability measures, okay? So the first metric is the so-called Levy-Prokhorov metric. And it's defined by the following equation. So we take infimum over all positive epsilon such that the following comparison holds for all Borel sets um, in our metric space S. So the probability P of the set A is less than or equal than the probability Q of an epsilon neighborhood of a set A plus epsilon. Okay, but this this must hold for all measurable for all Borel sets in our space. So that's the definition of um, Levy Prokhorov metric, right? It allows you to compare the probabilities on a given Borel set, but you give yourself an epsilon room, you know, to expand the set and also an epsilon room in, in the comparison of the probabilities themselves. And then the second metric that we will consider is, is called bounded Lipschitz metric. Okay, and the way it is defined is by taking, by comparing the integrals. So you take a supremum of this difference Right, between the integral with respect to probability p and integral with respect to probability q and here you compare over all um, so you take supremum over all bounded Lipschitz functions with the bounded Lipschitz norm less than or equal to 1 okay and the first thing you want to do is to check that these are indeed metrics and uh, it's a little bit more straightforward for the bounded Lipschitz metric because from the beginning the definition is symmetric, right? If you change the order P and Q for the bounded Lipschitz metric, it's the same supreme. The only um, step here that requires a little bit of work is, is to show that levy prokhorov metric is symmetric because, well, the definition is not symmetric. You control P by this uh, you know, by Q from above, it's not automatic that you get the same infimum if you switch P and Q, but you have to check this, okay? And and maybe just briefly, the, the way this is done is if you have a set that violates the, the that comparison, so let's say you have a set A such that this probability is greater than Q of A epsilon, plus epsilon, then what you can do is you can take complements, okay? And if you take a complement here, you get probability Q of the complement of A epsilon is greater than the probability of A epsilon plus epsilon. But then you can check that um, sorry, the, not A epsilon here, but the complement, right? So we take the complement, so you, you just get the complement of A here. And then you, ju if you just have to check that the complement of A is actually bigger than um, the epsilon neighborhood of this set on the left. So if you take epsilon neighborhood, then, then take complement, they then take epsilon neighborhood, you know, it's just a kind of one line, um, check that this is indeed the inclusion, right? And because of this, you can write here that this is greater or equal than probability of A epsilon complement epsilon plus epsilon. And then what you get is that the same violation um, in the d when you switch P and Q occurs for the set be given by the set A epsilon complement. So if you have a set that witnesses 
this violation in one direction just by taking compliments and making this observation you you have a set that witnesses violation on the other side okay and then of course this gives you the symmetry that the inf infimum will be the same okay but otherwise everything else is pretty straightforward um, you can read it in the notes how um, you prove that these two are indeed metrics on the set of all probability measures on our metric space um, SD. All right, and now we come to the main result of this section, namely that th these two metrics that we define, we defined um, Mitrai's convergence, weak convergence of probability measures when our metric space is separable. Okay. Okay, so the main theorem here is that the following four are equivalent. Again, convergence of the sequence of probability measures to P. Okay, number two is that, um, well, we already saw this, but just for convenience of the proof, we repeat this here, that for all bounded Lipschitz functions, we have convergence of the integrals. Okay, then number three is that these metrics converge in the bounded Lipschitz metric that we just defined. And number four is that they converge in the Levy-Prokhorov metric. Okay. All right, so let's <clears throat> briefly discuss um, various implications here. So we already have one to two. And then how do we go from two to four? Oh, and by the way, yeah, I, I mentioned this before, but let me emphasize here, we have an assumption on the metric space S that it is separable. Okay, in the notes, I also write that one can assume that S is not separable, but then you basically have to make an assumption on this limiting probability P that we are going to use here as following from separability, but you know the really the main setting is is um, that applies to all probability measures is in the separable case. Okay, and so um, the implication from two to three is the place where we we use something I mentioned um, before is that you can think of your separable metric as you know pretty much being complete and actually we have already seen this in the proof of Varadarian's theorem because here we are talking about bounded Lipschitz functions so we saw that there is a unique extension to a completion so there is this one-to-one -one correspondence between bounded Lipschitz functions on our metric space and the completion and um, Oh, sorry. And by the way, here the you know I meant, of course, that the metrics are, are the same. It's the same metric D. Here we do not uh, change the metric. We simply consider a completion. And the reason why, if if you consider first, if you assume that your metric space is also complete, so in other words, you can just consider a completion. Okay, then we have Ulam's theorem that will tell us that for every epsilon you can find some compact set in as such that the this limiting probability P on this compact set carries almost all the weight. Okay. And then what you do is you essentially when you um, look at this convergence of integrals for bounded Lipschitz functions you know the part of the integral outside of the compact at least in the limit is, is small and then with a little bit of you know technicalities you can also um, think that the, the, the same part is small before the limit and so you know more or less or let's say morally you are really now working on a compact okay and on a compact, the unit ball in the space of bounded Lipschitz functions, 
by Arcel Ascoli is totally bounded. So you can approximate all those functions in the you know in this unit ball of bounded Lipschitz space within you know arbitrary precision epsilon uniformly by a finite collection. Okay, and that's exactly what the main point of going from two to three is, right? That from two you just making a statement for individual functions. In three you are taking a supremum over this unit ball. Okay, but since this supremum can be approximated by just a maximum on finitely many, if you are on a compact, then on a compact you you would have. Um, you know this implication okay and the rest is just little technicalities that if your space is complete you can use Ulam's theorem restrict yourself to a compact and um, then use Arcelas Coley theorem so again um, the, the details are, are in the notes here okay. okay and the only thing to add here is that when your space is just separable and not complete you consider this implication 2 to 3 on the completion and because of this 1 to 1 correspondence for bounded Lipschitz function you, you just bring it back to the original separable space so you, you don't actually need completion here okay now next let's take a look at um, implication 4 to 1 so uh, let's let's leave uh, the one 3 to 4 for last so let, let's look at the implication four to one first. Okay, so that's a, another place where we can use portmanteau theorem. And in particular, we want to use that the condition with the closed sets. Okay. Now, the fact that Levy Prokhorov metric um, or, or this sequence Pn converges to P in the Levy Prokhorov metric. Right means that you can when you compare the probability Pn of a set A, well you can ex expand this set a little bit by an epsilon. Okay, and this epsilon here can go to zero because you know this raw this Levy Prokhorov metric goes to zero. So you can choose some epsilon n going to zero such that if you expand the set a little bit and add another epsilon, you would have this inequality for all Borel sets, right? And now let's apply it to a closed set. So if in particular when A is closed, right? And why we want to close? Well, we, we, we see in a second, right? If A is closed, then you can write that upper limit of the probabilities Pn over set A will be less than or equal to, well, the second term A epsilon disappears, but what happens to a probability of A uh, n, right? Well, that's where we use the fact that the intersection of these sets uh, will be the closed set itself, right? When you look at the epsilon neighborhood of a closed set and then you uh, let this epsilon go to zero in the end you will recover the closed set now if your set was not closed you would get the closure but here you get the set itself and so by the continuity of measure on the right hand side you just get probability of the set and that was one of the condition in the portmanteau theorem that tells us that indeed pn converges to p uh, weakly Okay, and so the only step that is left here is 3 to 4. Okay, and for that we will actually prove uh, the first comparison between these two metrics. Okay, that you, you can, from the definitions, show that the, you know, if you have two metrics, uh, P and Q, then the levy prokhorov metric is less than twice the square root of bounded Lipschitz metric. Okay, so uh, let's see how this follows directly from the definitions. 
given a Borel set A, what we want is to approximate the indicator of the, the set by bounded Lipschitz function. Okay, and the way you do this is consider this function f of x, where, uh, well, you know, you you take 1 minus 1 over epsilon, the distance from the set A. So when point x is in A, this will be 1, like an indicator of a set. And when the point x is outside of A, as you move away, you know, this quickly will go down and you just stop that at zero. So you take a maximum with zero. So this will be in between zero and one. It will be one on A and it will be zero outside of the epsilon neighborhood um, of the set A. So the indicator of the set A will be smaller than F, but F will be smaller than the indicator of the epsilon neighborhood, right? Because when you go outside of the distance epsilon, this function will already be zero. And because the distance to a set is a, has a Lipschitz constant one, here it's scaled by one over epsilon, and your function f is in between uh, zero and one, right? The bounded Lipschitz constant here will be bounded by one plus one over epsilon, okay? And then you use this comparison of indicator and f by writing that a probability p of a set A will be less than the integral of f with respect to p. And then you change it to integral of f with respect to q plus the difference. Okay. Then since f is uh, less than the indicator of the epsilon neighborhood replacing f in this first integral here by this bigger indicator you you get measure q on epsilon neighborhood of a and then in the second term when you compare the integrals with respect to p and q right if you um, use the fact that bounded Lipschitz constant here is at most 1 plus 1 over epsilon. If you multiply and divide it, now you can bound this difference by the supremum of this difference over all bounded Lipschitz functions in the unit ball, which is exactly the bounded Lipschitz metric between P and Q. Okay, and in particular, now epsilon was arbitrary in this calculation. And if you take uh, epsilon to be, if you take delta to be the maximum between epsilon and uh, the second term, one plus one over epsilon times the bounded Lipschitz distance between P and Q, then what we proved is that probability P of A is bounded by Q of A delta plus delta, right? So that, by definition of the levy prokhorov metric, this tells, tell, and this calculation was true for any set, so this tells us the levy prokhorov metric between P and Q is bounded by, by delta, okay? And then you simply have to uh, optimize over epsilon here to see that you can get... Um, twice twice the square root okay in fact you can just take uh, to make this clean inequality you can take epsilon to be square root of beta and then uh, the maximum between the two will be the second term okay it will be beta plus uh, square root of beta and then you simply notice that when when beta is less than one the square root is the bigger term, right? So this will be less than twice square root of beta is if beta is less than one. Okay, but if beta is bigger than one, then you can also notice that Levi-Prokhorov metric is always bounded by one because if 
you know, if you use, I mean, probability is always bounded by one. So here you can simply say this is bounded by one. So it's also still true that this is less than square root of two beta. Okay. So using this um, approximation of an indicator function of a set by a bounded Lipschitz function, we get here directly from the definitions the, this one comparison between these two metrics. Now in the next section on Strassen's theorem, we'll have inequality, you know, a different inequality in the other direction where uh, bounded Lipschitz metric will be dominated by the levy prokhorov metric, but the proof of that will be much more complicated. But for now, this finishes the proof of this theorem that the, the two metrics that we defined here, the bounded Lipschitz metric and levy prokhorov metric, on a separable metric space indeed uh, metries convergence of probability measures. So on a separable metric space we can think of the set of all probability measures um, with the topology of weak convergence as, as just a metric space. And then what we'll do next is, is prove that this space kind of inherits nice properties from, from the original space.